Hello Grade 12s, today we will look at present value annuities. Present value annuities include loans, whether they are small or large, and lump sum investments. The word present value annuity tells us that we need the money in the present, or we invest the money in the present. Whereas future value tells us that we will receive the money in the future. In a previous lesson, Tebucho needed 10,000 rand to pay for his university fees. He could only invest 700 rand per month, which left him with a shortfall of 2,745 rand and 29 cents. He was left with only one option, and that was to consider taking out a loan. Let's join Tebucho as he talks to his teacher about taking out a loan. They will take us through the important details of taking out a loan. So tell me, how did you get on with finding out about a student loan? Well, I went to the bank and I met someone who gave me some information on student loans. I also picked up this pamphlet uh, that talks about an NSFAS uh, loan. And also I met some guy on the street who gave me a pamphlet on uh, microloans. Okay. It seems to be quite good. They are offering unsecured loans under 5,000 Rand that can be paid off with small repayments. At first glance, it might look like a good option. But you need to be very careful about taking out loans from micro lenders. They usually have very high service and admin fees and also usually charge much higher interest rates, sometimes up to 40% per annum compounded monthly. Really? I did not realize they charge so much interest. I mean, I don't want to pay 40% interest. That's almost half of the loan. I guess I'll probably have to start thinking about going the student loan route. I think we should do some calculations to work out which student loan would be better, the student loan from the bank or from NSFAS. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Where do we start? The best place to start when considering a loan is to work out how much you can afford to repay and how quickly you want to pay off the loan. Then we can use the data we've got to work out how big or small the loan can be. Well, I don't think I would be able to start paying the loan off till I start working. I also know that even with a degree, you don't just walk into a high paying job. I also know that when I start working, I can expect many other expenses too. Well, taking that into consideration, I think I should be able to afford to pay about 800 Rand a month. I'd also like to pay it as quick as possible, say within um, 24 months. Okay, now let's use the information you are given from the bank. <laughs> They are prepared to offer you a loan that has an interest rate of 9% compound interest calculated monthly for the period you are studying. When you start working, the interest rate increases to 21% per annum compounded monthly. Uh, that's right. Now, when you are paying off a loan that works on compound interest, not all of the repayment goes towards reducing the initial loan. Some of the repayment goes towards paying the interest, which is calculated at 21% per annum. Are you saying when I make my first repayment, the loan will not only go down by 800 Rand? That's right. By the end of one month, the amount owing would have increased by the rate of interest for that month. We can calculate the present value of the 800 Rand paid in one month's time by dividing the 800 Rand by 1 plus the annual interest written as a decimal divided by 12 because the interest is calculated monthly. So does that mean that the 800 Rand is only worth about 786 Rand now? You've got it. I also want you to see that we can write this expression in an exponential form. Here, the denominator can be written with an index or exponent of minus 1. Well, I don't want a loan of only 786 Rand. I guess I'll have to make more repayments. So tell me, what will happen to the second 800 Rand I pay in? The 800 Rand you pay in two months is worth even less now. The 800 Rand is divided by the interest term squared. We can write this as a negative exponent. When we do this, we see that the present value has decreased to 773 Rand. Well, I guess that the total amount that can be borrowed can be found by adding them both together, like we did for the future value annuity. That's right. Now, do you think you could predict the present value of the third month's repayment? Yes, I think I see a pattern here. Will the value of the third repayment be 800 times bracket 
1 plus 0 comma 2 1 divided by 12 close bracket all to the power of the value minus 3. Well then, and as you continue paying off the loan, you will see that the present value of your monthly repayment amount decreases each month. To work out the actual present value of the loan, you would add all the monthly payment terms together. Isn't it the same as what we did for the future value annuity? Is this also a geometric series? Well, why don't you have a look at the terms of the series and you can work out whether it is geometric or not. Well, I think it's geometric because there is a common ratio between each term. The terms all decrease by a factor of 1 plus 0 comma 2 1 divided by 12 to the minus 1. You're quite right. And if you remember, we used the sum formula to calculate the future value of the annuity in the previous lesson. Yes, I do. So can we use the same approach here? Yes, we can. The common ratio is 1 plus 0 comma 2 1 divided by 12 to the minus 1. And the first term is 800 times that value. See if you can work out the present value of the loan if you make 24 payments. OK. Last time I substituted the values into the formula. So this time I'll do the same thing. If I do this here, we find that the present value of a loan I can afford is 15,568 Rand and 55 cents rounded off to the nearest cent. Can I check if the calculation is right, the same way I did with the future value annuity? Yes, there is a formula you could use to do that. It's called the present value formula. The P stands for the present value of the loan. This is the amount you borrow. X is the installment required for each time period. N is the number of installments selected. And I is the percentage interest rate for the time period written as a decimal. Well, this formula looks very similar to the future value formula that I used to do the annuity calculations. Even some of the symbols used in this formula are the same. And these formulae have similar structures. They are both fractions where the numerator has one term, x multiplied by a bracket. Inside the bracket, the term 1 plus i is also the same. They also both have an exponent of n. You're doing very well, Taboko, but also take very careful note of how these formulae differ too. In the future value formula used to calculate the future value of the annuity, the 1 plus i term has a positive index, n. But in the present value formula used for loan calculations, the n value is negative. In the future value annuity formula, we subtract 1 from the exponential term. But in the loan formula, we subtract the exponential term from 1. Now why don't you check and see if you get the same answer as you found when you do the sum of the geometric series. OK, I'll start by writing down what I've been given and what I want to find. I know the installment x is 800 Rand. The number of installments is 24 and the monthly interest is 0, 0,21 divided by 12. If I substitute these values into the formula, I'll find P, the present value of the loan, which is also 15,568 Rand and 55 cents rounded off to the nearest cent. We say thank you to Debucho for taking us through the important points regarding a loan and the loan options. Remember, in present value calculations, we will always use the present value formula instead of the sum of a geometric series. Let us look at another application of the present value formula. Jacob and his wife together earn a monthly salary of 30,000 Rand. They buy a flat and take a loan that charges 11% interest per annum compounded monthly for 25 years. They will make equal monthly repayments of 20% of their total salary. Determine the amount of the loan. 
We are going to use the present value formula in this question. The present value formula is P equals X multiplied by open bracket 1 minus open bracket 1 plus I close bracket to the power of minus N close bracket divided by I. The equal monthly bond repayment, X equals 20% of 30,000 rand. That is 20 divided by 100 multiplied by 30,000, which equals 6,000. I equals 11% per annum compounded monthly. Therefore, I equals 0 0.11 divided by 12. And N equals 25 multiplied by 12, which equals 300. Substituting the values into the formula will give P equal to 6,000 multiplied by open bracket 1 minus open bracket 1 plus 0, 0,11 divided by 12 close bracket to the power of minus 300 close bracket over 0, 0,11 divided by 12. Punching these values into the calculator gives us the answer of 612,174 rand and 26 cents. This is the amount of the bond that Jacob and his wife qualify for. Now most banks will calculate what 30% of the gross salary per month of a family is. They will use this amount as the amount which the family can afford to pay as a bond repayment. However, a home buyer must remember that other expenses, like insurance, on the house will increase the bond repayments. Furthermore, if you purchase a house and you are able to pay more than the bond installment, it will save you a lot of money on the total interest. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You'll also be able to learn more about financial mathematics on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.